Hey guys, I wanted to revisit a video that I made a few months back about the buy button inside Shopify. Now, one of the things that I realized after I made that video is having a little bit of context around where this buy button would be used could be quite helpful. So what I wanted to do is I first wanted to go over what are sales channels and how they are used on the internet. So when you're thinking about a sales channel, what is a sales channel? Well, a sales channel is anywhere where you find customers. So an example of a sales channel is Facebook, Instagram, Amazon. These are all places that you would be able to obtain a customer. And when a customer comes through one of these channels, uh, they will be recorded separately so that you can individually market to each individual one. Now, Shopify maintains support for a number of channels. They have plugins for all sorts of the big name marketplaces that are out there. However, there are some competitors that they don't have native integrations for. Some of these competitors would be other CMSs, so something like WordPress, Wix, or Squarespace. You might want to use the power of Shopify to do your fulfillment and your order management and your inventory control, but you might want to keep your website on another platform that you're more used to using. Or maybe you don't want to fit the expense of moving everything over to Shopify and you want to continue to grow on the platform you're with, but you want to take advantage of all the power of using a system that is designed specifically for taking orders. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over how to use the buy button, how to create it inside Shopify, and then I'm going to show you how to install it into the three most common platforms that are used for websites. So I'm going to show you how to install it into WordPress, I'm going to show you how to add it to Wix, and then I'm going to show you how to add it to Squarespace. Okay, before we get started, you're going to need a few materials in order to do this. So the first thing you're going to need is you're obviously going to need a Shopify store. So I've left a link down below where you can sign up for a 14-day trial and get going on that side of things. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a product installed on that Shopify store. I have a tutorial which I'll link up above here that will let you go and see how to add a product properly into Shopify. Then the other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need access to whatever sales channel that you want to add this buy button to. So if you're doing it on Wix or you're doing it on WordPress, you're going to need those logins. Okay, so we're on our dashboard here and we want to have a look on the left hand side and we've got this menu item that says sales channels. Right next to it, there's a plus sign. So if we click on the plus sign, it's going to ask us to add which sales channels that are available. Now these are the sales channels that are approved by Shopify and they do a seamless integration with these services. What we're going to look for is we're going to look for the one that says buy button. So if we go down to buy button, we're going to hit the big giant plus and we're going to add that to our store. Now what Shopify is going to do is it's going to take that button, add it to the store, it's going to refresh the dashboard, and then it will come back and allow us to start configuring a buy button. So now that it's gone and installed the buy button app, we can go create a buy button. All right, now we've got to create buy button. Now we need to decide on which product we're going to include in our store. Now we can have products or we can have collections. Um, for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna go and pick a product that um, has stock and that is set to visible. Okay, now we're on the configure the product button. We're going to configure the look and the feel of our buy button. So when we start off, the first thing we want to do is we want to choose a template. Now a template comes in basic, a button, or enhanced. You see on the right hand side things are going to be changing depending on what template you choose. Now, each individual template is going to be used in different situations, and I'll get more into which situations these are going to be used on down below. But for the purpose of this demo, let's start off with the basic. Okay, so we have a basic, and we've shown it shows our product, our project title, our price, and our add to cart. The next thing we need to do is we need to choose an action. Now, under the action, you have three options. You can either direct shoppers directly to a checkout so that when they click the checkout button, it will take just that one product image, take them over to a checkout page, which will actually show up in a modal message, um, and let them check out. The second option is add products to a cart, and then the third option shows the product detail. Now, depending on what your use case is, you want to change the action to be conducive to the environment that you're going to be using it in. In the sake of this demo, I'm going to select add product to a cart because I want to show you guys what it looks like to have the cart on another site so that you can get a full um, experience of the whole 
checkout process. All right, moving down, we can then go down to the size of the image that we want to put on our buy button. Typically, I like the small image. It, it keeps everything compact, and especially when you're placing it on another site, you don't want it to be too big. Alignment tells you where you want it, left, center, or right. And then you can hit the option which is gonna show additional product images. So if someone clicks on another product image, they can see the different images that you have set up on the product. Okay, now we have button style and text. So in button style and text, this is talking about the button that we've got down here. Um, we can go and change the text size, we can change the color, we can change the padding, so how wide the, uh, the button is. We can also turn on the quantity field and change the button text. Now if we come back, we're gonna get on to the next piece, which is the font styles. Now I wanna spend a couple seconds talking about fonts here. Fonts on the internet have been traditionally a very difficult thing to reproduce, and mostly it's based on a little bit on technology, but also on copywriting. So there are different fonts that are available for print advertising as well as uh, web advertising. The fonts that are getting pulled up in this directory are fonts that are coming from the Google Font Library. They have been fonts that have been purchased by Google and they have been placed on the, um, the Google Font Library that are free for you to use. Now if you're using systems like Wix or um, Squarespace, they are going to be using the same font library so that you'll be able to match the font with the font that you're looking for. However, if you have a custom font, you're not gonna be able to use the buy button in this editor to use that custom font. You can only choose from the fonts that are on this list. So just a small important note to make. So um, now that we're on shopping cart, this is the shopping cart that slides out from the side. Now, if you had selected option A back when we were choosing what kind of button we wanted the action for it to click on, you're not gonna need to configure this because that's gonna take you directly to the checkout page. However, if you selected option B or C, I in this case had selected option B, then we are gonna need to configure the look and feel of this uh, this modal message. So we can go in, change some of the shipping information, we can change a couple of fields, and we can change the button text. Okay, so now that we've finished configuring the, the button to look and feel the way that we want, we can go up and generate the code. So we can go up to the right here, and we're gonna hit generate code, and it's going to give us a modal window which will have some code that we're gonna copy. We are then gonna to click to copy this to the clipboard and then we're gonna head on over to the site that we're going to install it on. All right, so the first place we're gonna go and install this code is on WordPress. So I'm gonna go and pull up our WordPress demo site that we're gonna use and I'm gonna log in. Okay, so now that I'm logged into WordPress, I'm gonna go and add a new page. Now, there are a bunch of places that you can add uh, this buy button in WordPress. You can add it to a post, you can add it to a page, lots of options there. For the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna create a new page because I don't actually want this button live on this particular website, but it will give us all of the information that we need in order to test it. So, we're gonna add a new page. and we're gonna to come to the page editor. Now WordPress has recently updated the way that they do page editing. It used to be just a, a, a content box that you could put in there, but they've now instituted new blocks. So we wanna actually click on the add block button and we want to go through the list of elements that they have here. The one we're looking for is under formatting and it's called custom HTML. So the difference between code and custom HTML, code will actually render code on the page and put it in a box with some borders and stuff around it so that people can actually see the code. Custom HTML will actually put custom HTML into your page. This is the option that we want. So we're gonna hit custom HTML and then we're going to paste in the HTML that we got from Shopify. Okay, once we've done that, we can hit the preview button. It will generate a preview for us and it will pull up that product on the page. Now, if we have a look on the, uh, the products on the page, we can switch through images, and we can hit the Add to Cart. The cart will show up on the right, and then we can hit Checkout, and it will open up our checkout page and allow us to process our order now we norm as we normally would. Okay, so that's how we install the Buy button inside of WordPress. Now, let's move on to Squarespace. All right, I've pulled up my Squarespace site here, and now we're gonna go and add that buy button to the Squarespace site. So for me to log into the Squarespace site, I hit Control Escape on my keyboard, and it will allow me to go into the editor. Now once I'm in the editor, the next thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna go and add a page to my site. So I'm gonna to go to Pages, and I'm gonna go and add a section. 
I'm going to pick a blank section for the sake of this demo so that it's going to add a new section to the bottom of my site and scroll me down to it when I click on it. All right, so we now have our new page. We now have to edit the, uh, the block that we've added and we need to click on the little raindrop here which allows us to add a block. Now once we're under add a block, what we want to do is we want to go down to more and in Squarespace, this is where it's called code. So depending on the system that you're in, um, they're going to have different taxonomies for the different pieces that come together. So we now have code. We can now go and paste in the code that we've gotten from Shopify and we can hit apply. Now, because we're using JavaScript, uh, most of these editors protect you from running JavaScript while you're editing your page. So if you have a look at my Squarespace screen, it says that I that Squarespace has blocked embedded scripts and we can't save them, but well, we can't see them. But what we can do is we can hit save, okay? And then we have to exit out of the editor in order for us to see the, um, the script enabled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna log out of Squarespace by clicking on my name. And now I can go back to the page, go down to the bottom and we can see that the page that I've just added now has the cart. It still has the same functionality that it did on WordPress. It just looks a little bit differently inside our template. Okay, I'm gonna head over to Wix now and we're gonna go through and we're gonna set up the same thing on the Wix page. So I've gone and created a website inside of Wix. I've used one of their templates and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add that HTML that we copied over from Shopify to our Wix site. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on add and that's gonna come up with our menu on the left hand side. What we wanna find is we wanna go down to more. Now, once we click on more, we're gonna have a bunch of options available to us. The one that we wanna grab is HTML frame. Now, let me just explain that Wix has a couple of limitations. It doesn't allow you to, to paste embed code directly onto the page because of the way their uh, editor works, but they do allow you to do a HTML iframe. Um, it does have some drawbacks. If it's too big for the frame, it's gonna get these scroll bars along the right-hand, left-hand side, but uh, for the sake of this, I think we're gonna be able to get it to work. So we have our little gray box, which adds in our code. We wanna to go to edit code, and then we wanna paste in the code that we got from Shopify. Once we do that, Wix is going to update, and it's going to give us our code on our page. We then need to drag the box that it sits in big enough so that it will show the entire HTML block that we just created. Once we've done that, we can hit the preview button and we can see now the add to cart is on Wix. Now if we hit add cart, here is the drawback on Wix, is that Wix, because you have to put it inside an iframe, the cart only, or the cart only shows um, inside that frame that you corrected, you created. So if you're using Wix as your website for uh, editing your stuff, you should use the first option if we're back on Shopify as your checkout item. So your action to be clicked, this should direct shoppers directly to checkout. That is the option you wanna select if you're on the Wix platform. Um, so let's do that and we'll update that so that you can see how that works. So we're gonna copy that to clipboard. We're gonna go back into our editor. We're going to edit the code and we're gonna paste in the new code that we, that we just updated. Okay, great. Preview the site. And when it loads, and we hit the buy now button, it's going to take us directly to the checkout. So this is the best user experience that you can get if you're using Wix and you wanna connect Shopify to it so that you can sell your products through Shopify. Okay guys, that's it for me today. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to follow along as we added Shopify to your existing CMS. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. I try and make new videos every Thursday. Remember, always make sure that you take a backup of your site before you start working on it, as well as you shouldn't be editing live code because when you do that, you run the risks of having mistakes happen that could cause your site to go down. But other than that, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you have a lot of fun and we'll catch you in the next one.